So this lesson we are probably going to open up for the hardest thing to understand in Angular. And it's not even Angular's, it's not even something built only for Angular, it's something you can use in any framework you want. And that's called RxJS. Now RxJS builds a pretty amazing framework for working with asynchronous uh, requests. And they have a lot of other things in there. But think of it this way, whenever you're working with web applications, you're going to send a request over the wire, but you don't know when you're going to get a reply. So think of it this way, I am a client now, I need some data to show, I need a list of customers in my case. So I'm sending to the wire, I'm saying to www, here is a HTTP request, I need to get some data back. Yeah, the, the internet says, yeah, I know, I know where you wanna go, you wanna go to this REST API, because you told me that's the, the address you wanna go to, this REST API at some point figures out, okay, I'm getting a data somehow, blah, 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 and I'm packaging it into a new JSON response, and I'm sending it back to you. But the time between asking for the data and getting the data back, you don't know how long that time is. You don't, you have no way. So in order not to lock down your application and say, I have to freeze the screen and wait for the data, we use what we call asynchronous calls, right? So if this is the first time you work with that, that's a pretty tough thing to understand, first of all. Um, but it's pretty much all it means is that we don't want to freeze the screen while we wait for data. We just want to get a response, um, get informed when the response is actually returned to us. So it's a way for us to say, I'm going to send a request, I'm going to keep working, and when you're done, you're just going to tell me. You're going to give me um, the information as a small response. I got the data for you here, right? So instead of waiting and just stopping, it's, let's think of it this way. If you were working in a real physical job and you kind of need something from your boss and you tell the boss, dear boss, I would like to get this information from you. And he says, yes, I'll get it. I just need to figure it out and I'll come back to you. Now, if you didn't have asynchronous calls, you would have to sit down and just wait for your boss to come back. Just sit down, wait. And at some point the boss would come and say maybe after two hours because he was busy, he had some meetings, he would come back to you and say, here's the information you ask. And you could say, cool, there's the information, let's get back to work, right? But that's not how it should work with asynchronous call. So what you'll do instead is you'll say, dear boss, I need to get this data from you and the boss will go and figure out the data and you'll get back to work. You'll start working, da 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 da. At some point he knocks the door and says, here's the data for you. Oh, sweet, and then you can continue that job, right? That you request the data for. That's asynchronous calls. Now, RxJS set up a way using what we call observables. So we can actually say, we want to subscribe. We want to wait for you to give me some feedback at some point. So think of it this way again. I'm subscribing to my boss. I'm, I'm giving him a task to do for me. And I'm subscribing and saying, when you're done, please let me know. Right? That's the subscription. And when, the, when he's the, the and yeah, notice right here, I'm, I'm the coworker who asked my boss to do stuff. That's how it works in my world. So I tell the guy, you need to do this for me. And when you're done, I'm listening, I'm subscribing for when you're done. And when you're done, you'll come and knock my door and give me the data I request, right? That's the same thing we need to do. We need to be able to say using observables. So we're going to hook up to a request we make. We're going to say, I'm sending this request over the wire and I'm subscribing to that information. So when the request and when you're done getting the data I required from you, you will tell me, you'll send information back to me. You'll give me a notification that I now completed the task you asked me to complete. And you'll give me the data and I can then use the data. And while I wait, I can do something else. I don't have to sit and wait. I, have to, I don't have to freeze the application. I can just keep working with whatever I want to work with. That's asynchronous calls. And I know it's kind of, boom, mind-blowing the first time you hear it. And next lesson, we're going to try and implement it. It's going to be even more complex probably the first few times you're going to work with it. But it's something you have to learn. If you want to be a web developer, if you want to work with anything that's distributed nowadays, you have to work asynchronously. Even if you work with a desktop application, you have to work asynchronously. You cannot freeze the screen. Users won't accept that anymore. So you will have to just ask for some information and at some point you'll get it, right? It's the same thing you're doing kind of with a button. When you click a button, you, 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 you don't freeze the screen until the user clicked the button. You just say, if somebody clicks the button, I want an event, right? Same idea. So in our case with this customer app, I actually, in here, I set up all these buttons so I'm listening for events from them 
and whenever I do an event, I, I kind of trigger something when I do an event, right? That's kind of the same idea. Setting it up, waiting for events. So we're going to work with that in the next lesson. We're going to start using observables to actually get information when a request has actually been executed. We're going to be informed with the new data. See you next time. Have fun.